ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಡೇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಪ್ಲಾನೆಟ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ರೆಟ್ರಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆದರ್ ಯು ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಇನ್ ಅಸ್ಟ್ರಾಲಜಿ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬೈ ಜ್ಯೋತಿಷ್ ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕುಲೇಷನ್ ಇಟ್ ಸಿಗ್ನಿಫೈಡ್ ಅ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರಮೆಂಡಸ್ ಇಂಟ್ರಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಸರ್ಫೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಪ್ಯಾಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಸಬ್ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಡೆಲ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೊ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಐ ನೋ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಥಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ಗುಡ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಡೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ around this time and you know put some ducks in a row <laughs> for the next chapter because you very rarely get an opportunity like this where mercury was retrograde now it just changed a few days ago now it's direct but mars saturn uranus neptune the big heavy duty planets are all still retrograde Mars is going direct on the 27th with this which is also the next full moon. Two weeks after that, Saturn goes direct. And then the outer planets go direct later on the year, October, November. So what does this mean? It's a chance to introspect. Huh? Retrograde motion means huh? turn the light around. <laughs> shine the light on yourself and observe how these different planetary cycles are mirrored or reflected or shine their light on our own human affairs uh, so i just wanted to plant that seed and then we'll go into the verse forgetting self which gives you the seer light to see and being confused do not run after this appearance the world which you see the appearance will disappear and is hence not real but self the source of you the seer can never disappear so know that that alone is real and guess what tatvamasi thou art that uh, so this is the mm, deepest or most esoteric truth of the vedic teaching the vedanta um you know we did a series on vedanta and the Vedanta opens with the famous shlokam uh, or sutra uh, atato brahma jignasa huh? now therefore is the time to inquire into brahman the absolute truth so the meaning of the words now and therefore is that after going through all the other stages of the vedic teaching the dwaita and the vishishta dwaita huh? now is the time to consider the ultimate truth of brahman and now then what does that mean according to our our present context it means now in the vivartavada stage leading up to the ajata stage and and to even reach this stage one has to have a tremendous credit of pious activities and and that's why i stress so much the foundation of bhakti and karma yoga huh that some sophisticated artificially intelligent people <laughs> reject what they call ordinary ritualistic religion Oh because we're so enlightened now you know we know that it's all one and everything but what happens then is that they 
they lose their adhikari, their adhikar, their their qualification, uh, their karmic bank account, their foundation that allows them entrance into the higher levels. So jump up, fall down. <laughs> I have to repeat myself because I see it so much and people just aren't getting it. So what does that have to do with astrology? <laughs> okay. The world is a projection of the mind. It's a superimposition on the reality, just like the LCD pixels on the screen that you're watching this on, are in superimposition on the backlight of the LCD panel itself, the display itself. So in the same way, the mind is an overlay or superimposition upon the substrate of absolute consciousness, Brahman. And this is the real being. This is what really exists. It's windy today. And the projection is just like a movie in a movie theater. Huh? Or just like this movie on your computer screen. When it's over, it blanks out and it goes away. So in the same way, everything is like that. But when does it happen? And When does it go away? <laughs> this can be known. Isn't it interesting that although, uh, let's be honest, we can't really understand how astrology works, but we know empirically or statistically, I should say, that it does work. For example, every full moon night, you ask any doctor or nurse, they'll tell you, every full moon night, accidents and injuries and bleeding, accidental uh, surgeries <laughs> with tools and stuff like that increase, right? There's a spike in emergency room admissions. This is well-known statistical fact, okay? So uh, why? Well, we can't explain why. <laughs> so what, right? Now, correlation does not infer causation. But isn't it cool that one part of the cosmos rhymes with our ordinary human affairs? Isn't that cool? It wouldn't, wouldn't that be something that God would do if he had a sense of humor? Huh? That, that these things apparently influence or correlate with these other things that seem to have no connection whatsoever. <laughs> That's just something God would do, you know, if he had a sense of humor. <laughs> and then let you know in the very end, uh, when you reach the highest truth, that actually <laughs> none of this is real. It was all just a show. You know, a cool concept. What are, what are some of the concept shows out there now? Black Mirror. Uh, Black Mirror is a concept. But then different, different plots and different producers and so on fit into that world, isn't it? It's like a context. So the context that, that God creates in the world is such that it rhymes in certain areas. And that's just so freaking cool. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> it is the self that gives us the light to see all these things, that illuminates all these things. How? With consciousness, with being. Because the self is conscious and consciousness and being alone. Because only the self is being that never changes. So the things that the self illuminates come and go according to the clockwork of the uh, planets and so on. 
It's like a clock. It says, okay, now it's time to think over your past life and the things that you'd rather do uh, over again better uh, and see how you could apply that wisdom to go going forward. Uh, yes, there's a time for that. And, and we're in that time now. It's a great opportunity to take a retreat and, and look back and see the different issues and how you could like adjust your desires and your energy flow to uh, respond to those challenges better. Hmm? Of course, that's on the personality level. That's on the dueta duet level. Okay, but that's real. In its context, it's real. You know, an enlightened person can be in knowledge of the absolute truth. They still have to get up in the morning and drink a glass of water and poop and do all that stuff, you know. It's like the prarabdha of the karma for this body will execute until it is done. And that's it. That's the law of nature. Within that, what freedom do we have? And how we take it, in how we look at it, in how we respond to it, or react to it, or not. So, the appearance will disappear, but you never disappear. You are the self, huh? You're the one who's conscious, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> if I put you in a dark room and then ask you, do you exist? Huh? Even if you can't see yourself, don't you still know that you exist? Why? Because you're conscious that you're conscious. Everybody is. So because of that, you are real. But the world is not real. The world is going to disappear. The whole world. Uh, the world will end. When? Tonight. When you go to sleep. Tonight when you go to sleep, you slip slowly into another world. Where is that world? <laughs> You might say, well, it's inside or it's in my mind or something like that. Well, then, isn't this world the same kind of thing? When you wake up from dreaming, that world disappears. And it's like it never was. You can't find it anywhere. It's gone. Oftentimes hard even to remember it. And when you're in that world, the dream world, this world is hard to remember. Maybe even we forget entirely who we are in this world. Isn't it? This is our experience. This is our, what we see, what we actually experience every day. The world disappears at night. Another world comes into being, and then that world disappears. Then we go into nothingness. But it's not nothingness, actually. It's Brahman. Brahman is there to take us in, heal our wounds, refresh us. And then again, we go out into the world. Why? We have desires. We have karma. We have karma because we have desires. So if we get to the point through spiritual discipline where we can regulate our desires, then we can also change our world. Because the world looks different to someone with or without desires. Hmm? I love this story to tell the story of the couple who came one day for darshan in a temple when I was a pujari, the Indian couple. And they're standing there and the, I'm doing the ceremony, the puja, and the woman is like, having a religious experience, you know. She's in ecstasy. She's in love with God and is having a beautiful experience. And next to her, her husband is like looking at his watch, you know, like tapping his foot. When are we going to get out of here? Right? Because one has different desires and can't appreciate the reality the other one is seeing. So in the same way, by... Changing or manipulating our desires 
uh, working on our mind, you know, personality-wise or whatever, uh, with the insight and the light of Jyotish on one hand and uh, Advaita on the other, uh, then we can really get someplace. And that place, of course, is self-realization. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Harihi Aung.